Hi, my name is Megan Roberts. I'm a certified genetic counselor here at the Mayo Clinic in Florida. I'm most often asked, what is a genetic counselor? I think what's important to note is that a genetic counselor is somebody who is trained in medical genetics. We have a master's degree which is very specialized in human genetics with a concentration in counseling. Why the concentration in counseling? Simply so we can help individuals adjust to news that we may give them. Here at the Mayo Clinic, I take part in a program called the Familial Cancer Program. It's a very specialized program which is comprised of me, Dr. Stephanie Hines, and Dr. Riker Johnson. What's most important to start is to talk about the process at which an individual is involved in genetic counseling. Most patients that I see are referred by either a oncologist, their hematologist, a family physician a lot of times, and or even their surgeon depending on what step of the process they're in. So a patient can really be referred by any type of physician. Now, what are the red flags and when should a patient consider being seen by a genetic counselor? I'd say most commonly it's breast cancer diagnosed under the age of 50, okay? Under 40 is even more concerning. Individual diagnosed with colon cancer under 50. Multiple colon polyps, which I generally define as 20 or more. An individual with endometrial cancer in the presence of colon cancer in the family. Maybe ovarian cancer under 60 with presence of breast cancer in the family. And then last but not least, individuals with any form of breast or ovarian cancer in the family with a history of Ashkenazi Jewish ancestry. Why is that important? A lot of people ask, simply because we know certain genes are more prevalent in certain communities. And that's why the ancestry is important. I ask every patient with their ancestry is simply to evaluate that or not, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be an increased risk due to that. Um, from there, when it comes to the program, a lot of people don't understand what my role in the program is. As a genetic counselor, I see every patient initially, their initial consult is with me. My job is to take a very detailed family history, take a very detailed personal history, and look for any pattern within those two combination together or separate, which may indicate that that individual has an increased risk due to a genetic factor, which is, I would term as a hereditary predisposition to cancer. It's a very broad term to describe a cancer syndrome, which there's multiple of. So describing them in general, we refer to them as a hereditary cancer predisposition. Once I see a patient, evaluate their family history and personal history, I usually have a very long discussion with them about one, what am I thinking, if anything, is going on? If I think something's going on, to what chance do I think something's going on? So for example, do I feel they have a very high chance to test positive for this disorder? Or do they have a very low chance? I could talk about the indications, meaning if I would find something, what would actually be recommended and or pursued? I also discuss the insurance implications. A lot of people have questions regarding insurance. And it's my job to know what insurance pays for, if it has criteria, and how well things are covered. So all of those are discussed during a genetic counseling session. I would say most counseling sessions last about 60 minutes, and if there's a lot of questions, they can go longer. Um, from there, usually testing will take three to four weeks, depending on what we're doing. If we even do testing, because as I said, we talk about if testing is even indicated. Sometimes I have patients come and I recommend testing for another family member and end up bringing them in and the stepwise process continues with another family member. Uh, once test results are received, it's my job to one, review them, two, interpret them, and then relay them back to the patient on what they actually mean and what it indicates. Sometimes you get news which is not so great, but it's important to remember that Having a positive test result, as we call it, is not always bad because it tells us what to do with that individual from this point on. I also talk extensively about patients if something's found about what we can do for their family members and how my role is to take care of their family members. And then obviously, importantly, what's recommended, screening, surgery, additional testing, and then what physicians I have available at the clinic that will help them manage their risk. So for example, indications for hereditary breast ovarian cancer. Those patients who test positive will see Dr. Stephanie Hines to talk about their breast cancer risk. And we also may refer them to a gynecologist to talk about some GYN issues. For the hereditary colorectal, those patients see Dr. Riker Johnson. Being that he's a gastroenterologist and a medical geneticist, he seems to be the best fit for somebody with hereditary colorectal cancer. Therefore, we comprise a very good team. Now, obviously I talked about two syndromes. There's multiple other syndromes that are entailed in genetics. And here at the Mayo Clinic, we do see those very rare things. It's important to note that Dr. Riker Johnson is also a medical geneticist, which means he's not confined to just hereditary colorectal cancer. And therefore, he does see a wide spectrum of adult onset disorders, which primarily 
our cancer. To make an appointment, I'd either ask your family physician how they can get a hold of us and or call Mayo Clinic and ask to be directed to the genetics program. We then can either help you determine if appointment's necessary or we can just make an appointment and have further discussion at the time of, of your appointment.